heard in the video that Anita Sarkeesian gave was saying, quote, you suck or saying you're a liar. So now no First Amendment when it comes to radical feminists. That's hate speech. That's harassment. And that's cyber violence. Theodore, what did you think when you saw Anita Sarkeesian get up in front of the UN and say, basically, milk toast criticism of feminists denotes cyber violence? How insane has it become when it gets to that level? Utterly laughable. She reminds me of a man known as Jack Thompson. This particular individual had ended up uh, doing a similar thing to the Congress in his efforts at lobbying censorship for games more locally. He had ended up being laughed out of the uh, out of the room and eventually due to his antics got disbarred with the media mocking him and laughing at him all the way, despite getting all the death and rape threats that uh, Anita Sarkeesian also has been getting. And let's talk about those threats, because this whole Gamergate controversy, how the media has treated it, is based on the supposition that the only threats are coming from Gamergate supporters and that radical feminists never make threats. They never threaten to hashtag kill all men. Me personally, I've had direct death threats from feminists who threaten to behead me, who threaten to put me on a guillotine. You know, their Twitter accounts don't even get shut down. We had the protein world situation where radical feminists threatened to bomb this weight loss company because they had a a poster campaign featuring a a thin model. We had Gamergate meetups that were had bomb threats leveled against them. How ridiculous is it when the majority from what I see of the threats of the actual threats are coming from radical feminists and SJWs themselves? Oh, yeah. I had ended up uh, documenting an earlier piece. Uh, it was during October. You might be familiar with it. Remember Brianna Wu, uh, one of the women chased out of uh, games, supposedly? She had ended up getting uh, international news. She had ended up getting like 40 uh, bloody articles in like over a weekend. Um, I had ended up comparing it with another person that had gotten a similar threat uh, that was known on Twitter as GG Feminist. That she had ended up finally getting a mention in a Vice article about two months after the death threat incident. In stark contrast to Brianna Wu, who was supporting the feminist narrative of victimhood, had gotten 40 plus articles over the course of a weekend. And yet, ABC News has these specials where they literally show. Anita Sarkeesian getting into a cop car saying how that, you know frightened she is by all these <laughs> Gamergate supporters that are leveling these violent you threats. Newsflash. Anyone you know who is a public figure gets death threats. Anyone, no matter what their political viewpoint. We'll be back after the break with Theodore Morgan Major talking about Gamergate. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Your call's coming up. Stay tuned. We're back live. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. We got Rob Dew coming up with the fourth hour overdrive, so be sure to stay tuned for that. At the moment, we're talking about internet censorship. The United Nations and Gamergate. We're taking your calls at 800-259-9231. And we're talking to our guest, Theodore Morgan Major, who is the head of a research team into Gamergate. And we're explaining how this is the move by extreme radical left-wingers, by social justice warriors, to hijack control of the video games industry because the television news industry, Hollywood, is increasingly distrusted by the general public. So they need to move into different genres to push this political propaganda, to push to push this re-educate, re-education and social engineering. We've got a YouTube clip which was um, produced by our guest in which these social engineers talk about how they've openly, brazenly got an agenda to use video games to push this political re-education and how they're going to do it. Let's go to that clip. We have an opportunity to create a new form of games. We need to design games that are good for learning. We can change people's uh, uh, perspective on race or on gender uh, through play. Motivation and changing behavior. So through the Difference Engine initiative, we seek to plant the seeds of change. Yeah, I have an, I have an agenda. Sorry. But it works. Um, and I don't know how it works. So that clip basically 
it's a bunch of different people involved in this this video games industry that they're, they're working together. That's what I have to emphasize here. This is a, a program that's coordinated to re-engineer the population through video games. Theodore, just explain who was talking in that clip and what they were talking about. Um, uh, there's a few of them. Uh, let me boot it up. I got a document. Up. But what are the what are the social re-education agendas that they're pushing in that clip? What's the agenda? Um, is the they're specifically there? pushing for ed tech. They uh, want to uh, get uh, more money into that for games as training aids, as learning aids, as opposed to entertainment. There's uh, more money to be had in that, and it's far more malleable for uh, message-based gaming, which will uh, serve their ideology better. So that, and this is a coordinated agenda, right? This isn't just a, yeah. a, a matter of consensus where they each hold these individual beliefs. They're actually working together. We had oh, the yeah. release, the gaming journos list that was released where behind the scenes they were conspiring to do this correct yeah there was a specific instance in how they were covering the zoe quinn uh, issue uh, otherwise known as uh, conspiracy or burgers and fries it was the incident before right that hit uh, before gamergate and they were talking about giving zoe quinn gifts of all things it was so ridiculous. this is an agenda that's again very orchestrated Morgan yes. in Virginia, you're on the air. Morgan, go ahead. Hey there, how's it going, guys? Good enough. Good, go ahead with the question. Well, um, I would like to ask you guys, um, what do you guys think is the direction that uh, they're trying to take us with these video games that they're releasing now in the mainstream? Because I I've been kind of uh, out of the loop. I'm a huge gamer myself. I mean, I've been playing games for years, but uh, I I've been kind of disillusioned with most of the games that have been coming out because I like to do, you know, player versus player interaction and everything. And they're kind of shying away from sort of like the Olympic, like sporting event kind of thing. And they're like you guys were saying, they're kind of working on this weird re-education stuff and so i'm i'm wondering what's the, what's the direction they're taking because like you know I, I i i like to read and everything as well like ender's game kind of is is something that i'm sort of relating this to in a way because where's that point where's that end game where they're gonna like say to us hey you know you guys have been under all this you know programming and everything for all these years oops sorry you know we didn't tell you that <laughs> Well, where, where 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 does that point come out? What's the direction they're leading us? What are they trying to make us do? You know, instead of killing aliens out in space, you know, oops, sorry, spoilers. You know, what what are we actually fighting? What are we doing with all this video gaming? Exactly. This is what I wanted to get to. And Theodore, I'll get your comments on this. What exactly are they pushing? We had a caller before the break who was talking about Call of Duty. And of course, they're pushing, you know, Russia as the main geopolitical enemy in those kind of war games. Obviously, that would be expected, not particularly from a, a re-education viewpoint, because, you know, the current narrative is the US versus Russia, you know, in the geopolitical landscape. But we're talking about how they're pushing radical feminism. Again, we see it at the gender studies level, where they're trying to drive a wedge between men and women by pushing supremacy. Radical feminism is not about equality. It's not about egalitarianism. It's about female supremacy. And it's about driving home their political agenda, riding on the coattails of feminism, which in its first instance, in its first incarnation, was legitimate, was necessary, was justified. But now they're doing it to push this kind of authoritarianism, which suppresses and censors free speech. And that's why governments are getting involved. That's why universities are getting involved, because they've been signed over to this program. That's why the United Nations is getting involved, because this is about restricting freedom of speech and collating power into the hands of government, into fewer and fewer hands, which is why radical feminism is attractive to the state and to modern power structures, because it's no longer about instilling power within the individual, it's about instilling power within state bodies. So how are they pushing that in these video games? Theodore, go ahead. They're pushing it by uh, promoting their particular ideology, specifically uh, intersectionality. That, that belief is, oh, I'm sorry. 
That belief is that uh, there's bias in everything, which is why you might end up hearing Anita Sarkeesian talking about how there's sexism and racism everywhere. Because uh, in her mind, there is sexism and racism everywhere. Anyways, the particular method which they're going by is a, a process called captology. Um, it is games are persu- and persuasive tech. It was started by a man known as B.J. Fogg. He had, or a coin by him. It uh, was started in um, board games in the past, but over time it got adapted for video games. And he's trying, been trying to steadily uh, push papers to encourage more game makers to, uh, to follow his particular demands. And this is about using the tools of technology, using computers, using video games to push persuasive ideology. So it's not about you know, acquiescing to consumer demand. It's not about keeping people entertained, which they pay good money for. It's about using these technologies to try and push their political agenda, which again goes back to these, this idea of radical feminism, censoring, suppressing free speech. That's what it's all about. That's what Gamergate is all about. We're going to go to some more callers in a moment. But Theodore, just give us a plug for your YouTube channel and how people can find out more information. If you want to see the series, you can see it at uh, youtube.com slash Thydrin Brisbane. T-H-I-D-R-A-N-B-R-I-S-B-A-N-E. Okay, Theodore, thanks for joining us. We've got Alex Jones on the line now with breaking news. Do we have Alex ready or do we need to go to other call? All right. We'll go to Tim in Wyoming on Zuckerberg censorship. Tim, go ahead. Hello. We have Tim. Hello. Yes, yes Tim, yes, you're hi. on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Um, I wanted to mention, um, I don't know if you have mentioned it or not, but uh, Mark Zuckerberg talking to Angela Merkel, and he said basically that he was working, well, essentially, I mean, he didn't say those words exactly, but he said he was working on trying to keep people from saying certain things on Facebook. Now, when the when the companies are self censoring and then in, in partnership with the government and the government says, Oh, you can go above and beyond, why not? And people talk about conspiracies, they say conspiracy theory. Well, this is obviously a conspiracy. This is a conspiracy reality. This is not It a, is exactly we've got breaking news now, so we'll say goodbye to the caller. We covered that actually. Mikhail Thalen wrote an article about it and Germans are also under threat of having their children snatched for anti migrant Facebook posts. While Mark Zuckerberg schemes with Angela Merkel to censor anti-migrant Facebook posts. So again, the argument that this internet censorship agenda is not a threat, is not an issue, completely debunked by the fact that major companies like Facebook are scheming with heads of government to censor people. And in Germany, they're now talking about even snatching people's children for anti-migrant posts. But we've got Alex Jones now on the air with Breaking news, Alex, go ahead. Absolutely. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere uh, in West Texas, uh, dove hunting with my son, trying to keep the Second Amendment alive. I know it's not about hunting, but hunting is what funds the pro-gun lobby and movement. So make no mistake, I used to always say uh, the Second Amendment is not about hunting, but that's actually wrong. The Second Amendment is first and foremost about defense of the Republic, defending your family, fighting off tyranny. But what funds the whole culture is having fun with firearms. So to tell Zuckerberg and Merkel and all of them that they can go to hell, I want folks to know we're getting a lot of dove out here that we're about to roast on the grill. It is my American duty. It is my religious duty uh, to take off today and to take my son out here dove hunting because I realize I've not been taking him hunting but maybe once a year. Uh, I'm going to take him alligator hunting. I'm going to take him uh, hunting for you know deer. I'm going to take him hunting for elk in Colorado. I'm going to be a good father and continue on with my grandfather and my father uh, taught me. And so that's why I'm openly apologizing here on air. But here is to uh, the Million Mom March propagandist funded by Bloomberg coming into Austin, Texas tomorrow. The very same husband and wife crew that got in my face. The man began to get physical with me and his wife. Uh, Kit Daniels has a story about it. Joe Biggs is going to be uh, there with the counter rally. Because I talked to Biggs and uh, Kit last night about it, but I, I guess we haven't quite launched it yet. Yes, folks, I'll be live on the radio tomorrow, Lord willing. But we need everybody to get down to UT, where the Bloomberg front groups are going to be calling for banning gun shows, 
and transferring firearms to family. And to them, I say this. You can take my gun from my cold, dead hand. That's what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen.